What am I going to do to make this a more tolerable conversation? I need you to be an information expert in this particular area. I'm going to give you everything that you need to be able to do that. So if I can figure out the best way for me to communicate with ChatGPT, then I could have those 30-minute conversations. And here's why. First of all, AI collects relevant information and analyzes it, and it can rapidly process large data sets. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today is November 7th, 2024. You're listening, watching The Daily Daily Show live. And today, we're all talking about how to make AI your sort of personal assistant, but more than that, really be an AI decision helper for you in life, in work, in all sorts of different areas. And to have this fun conversation, we have Jimmy, Beth, Andy, and I'm Brian. And um, I can kind of give, I guess, the overview. I guess I was sort of the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, concept for this show is based off of a post that I had done and actually something that had happened to me um, about a week ago, something like that. So as a lot of families do, uh, my wife and I were getting, um, it was that time of year for us to start talking about um, uh, renewing our health care insurance through my wife's work. So just for a little context on this conversation, and then we'll get into other ways that AI obviously could be helpful. But in my situation, where I was was that um, she works for the state of Florida as part of it. And of course, that's massive. And these things change like every year, like a lot of people. And there's always seems to be, you know, enough changes to a HMO or PPO or an HSA and all these acronyms. And Truthfully, I think like a lot of people, I don't think I'm, I'm the only one here. Like I think about this when it's time to think about it. I think about it probably when I have to pay a higher deductible than I remember that I agreed to that I wanted to pay, <laughs> you know, and some like some medical thing happens during the year and you go, How come I'm getting a bill for 1500? You're like, oh, that's because I, I selected the plan for the higher deductible, right? You know, so like most people, like you think about it, you research it, you do your best. My wife and I are both, both educated intelligent people as things go um and we do all right but then it but it, it it moves off the plate you know and then here you are again the next year and i will tell you for me personally uh it, it's right up there with like cooking in terms of things that i do not want to do or discuss i'm not somebody who wants to cook in the kitchen i i don't enjoy it it doesn't bring joy to my life not going to sit there and have a whole conversation about it. Not a foodie, right? And like doing this, I don't think anybody loves the health insurance thing, but it's just like such a grind. And so this is the way it goes every single year. My wife goes to me and says, hey, uh, this is coming up. This will be like, you know, September. She was like, hey, by like November 1st or whatever, we need to have a discussion about this. And I'll go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then she'll remind me again. She'll be like, hey, I got another reminder at work. This needs to be discussed. All right, we'll discuss it. And then, of course, more time goes by and I kick the can down the road. I kick down the gutter. And eventually it gets to the point of like, dude, this is due tomorrow or something like that. We procrastinated long enough. So knowing that I had said to my wife, look, I know we need to talk about this on some Tuesday night or whatever. It is getting later in the day and I realize I haven't done the legwork. And so here I am and I'm like, what am I going to do to make this a more tolerable conversation? And I want to be clear here for anybody listening. My wife is amazing. We have a great relationship. So if you hear me joking during this conversation, I realize you do not know my wife and our our personalities and stuff, but just know that we have a really good, easy, we're 20 years in the marriage or almost 19 years in the marriage, and we do just fine with our conversations. We're not big arguers or anything like that. This isn't just something that her and I particularly love talking about. So there's a little bit of tension in there. There's a little bit of back and forth. There's like, well, what are this? What are that? And what I ultimately realized it came down to, like a lot of people, is just misinformation, uneducation. Um, ignorance in the best way I mean that, and I'll put myself in there, where you're having a conversation with somebody you love and you have to make a good decision for your family about it. But the reality is you're both kind of coming into it not educated enough to have a good conversation. And therein lies where the, the tension becomes, for at least me and my wife, is that we're both trying to have an educated conversation where we're not educated enough, really. So I thought it's time for AI. It's time for chat GBT. So what ended up being, as, as I wrap this quick story up, what ended up being about a, at least an hour long conversation with myself and ChatGPT. And we started at the basics. Hey, this is what I have going on. I need some help here. I need to lay this out. Uh, 
I will tell you at the beginning of the conversation, I truly thought we would renew a PPO policy. By the end of it, we what we ultimately did was do an uh, a, a HMO policy that has like an HSA account that's called a high yield deductible plan. See, I've already forgotten some of what I already agreed to for my family for the for 2025, right? But nonetheless, this is what I'm thinking. My wife is thinking of it this way. This is her point to this, blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so then we get all the way down and it's a wonderful conversation of really helping me educate and understand the intricacies of just HMO and PPO. Then I was like, okay, I'm kind of like at a, a good place here. So then I gave it the URLs of the actual policy, the actual company that this would be going through. I looked it up online because she works for the state. It's pretty easy to see what's publicly going to be there. So I had access to that. I said, hey, this is what my, na my new options are. There's a wrinkle in this that I didn't realize I had that was going to be part of this discussion. And away we go again. When it was all said and done, I felt very confident, very informed that actually, in fact, what it had done is brought me towards where my wife was thinking, which is helpful. And so then my wife gets home and I'm like, hey, actually, there were some text messages before that where I was like, hey, I love you, but I also really love talking to ChatGPT because it gets me. And so there was some text messages back and forth, joking with each other. She's like, I'm so glad you found the love, right? We we're just joking with each other. But I said, no, for real, when you get home, before we talk, why don't you just take 20 minutes and read my transcript with ChatGPT? Because if nothing else, you'll know exactly what I said back to it. You'll already know where I was thinking. And now you have the benefit of all the information I learned in ChatGPT, plus my reasoning and thinking, because you'll see it in the transcript, in the conversation. So she did. What ultimately resulted out of all of this, and this is where the conversation of the, the, the topic of this show is, is that my wife and I had probably a five, maybe 10 minute conversation that was perfectly uh, um, polite, uh, that didn't record, didn't have any sort of quips or back and forth from either of us because either of, we, neither of us felt unready or unwilling to have the conversation at that point. And so we were able to make a very quick decision based off of using an AI tool or something like that to help with it. So there's the backstory to this show, but I think it goes bigger than this about how you can truly use AI as your assistant these days to work through really complex things that you're dealing with before bringing it to maybe your loved one, maybe somebody else in your life where you feel like you want to have a conversation about it. We were not a political show, but certainly you could have used something like this in the last week or two if you were having political conversations with other people in your life. And perhaps you wanted to come more informed to the table and say, well, I don't want to be an argument, but I know I'm going to this house and I know it's going to come up. And ee, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to make things worse or whatever. You certainly could use an AI to help yourself going into the conversation. Look, this is what I know I'm going to run into the minute I walk in the door. Help me say and say and dispel ideas and diffuse tension if this comes up. So there you go. I'll leave it to you, bring it to you guys or whatever. But have you guys used a similar situation like this, um, you know, either with loved ones or friends or family and stuff or, and had a positive outcome like I did? So I think what you're what you're highlighting is two uh, is two parts to this. Right. So one of them is to use A.I. as um, at, that that you're essentially uh, using AI and saying, hey, so I want to have a conversation. I need you to be an information expert in this particular area. I'm going to give you everything that you need to be able to do that. And then I'm going to get you to advise me so that we can have a consultative conversation. Um, uh, and then the second part is I'm going to need to talk to somebody that's not AI about this. So I'm going to want um, to, for us to prepare for that conversation too. And then, uh, if like, if you're in this situation that you were in, uh, you can actually just share that conversation. Like, go ahead. This is my, um, my cards are on the table as it were. Uh, if chat GPT were a table, those are my cards. Like you can, you can see all of that. I think it's a really interesting use case. Um, and you're right. I think it brought, first of all, I think a bunch of people are also making those healthcare decisions at this time and at that time in the U.S. Uh, go Canada. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that's what the U.S. is doing uh, at this time. Um, but also, I think you're right. Like the, and now let's broaden the idea. How many things are you asked to make a decision about that you 
are like, ah, okay, I feel a little rushed in this, so I'm just going to shoot from a uh, seat of my pants, and uh, I'm just going to make a ton of metaphors in this statement. Um, but that you kind of to thing. To really quick before we get into other use cases of this, because I agree with you, is I will tell you in this particular use case, it required me to be vulnerable. And I definitely thought about it before I said to my wife, now again, 20, almost 20 years. We've been together longer than 20 years, but you almost 2026 20, will be 20 years, right? So we're coming up on 19. And um, there's a bit of vulnerability there because by saying to my wife, hey, I could, I could try to regurgitate. I could try to summarize what our conversation was, but I knew it would, some would be lost in translation as opposed to her seeing the raw transcript. Even I could have said, thrown that into a notebook LM and said, listen to the five minute podcast, right? Even that would have lost something in there. I could have tried to remove myself or buffer myself out of it a bit because it was vulnerable for my wife to read what I was asking back of ChatGPT, which sometimes was, hey, can you explain that to me? Like, not a five year old, but can you explain that to me? Like, I'm a 20 year old. I don't know what this is. I realize I should as an adult. I feel I feel pressure and as an adult that I need to be doing adulting right now and I should know this, but I don't or I've forgotten. I've learned it and forgotten it. Can you help me out? It's great that I'm able to use those conversations to do that with AI because there's no pressure. AI is not going to judge me, but there also has to be a bit of growth and, and comfortable if you're going to share a transcript like that. I certainly, I certainly felt it and before I said to my wife, hey, you know what the best thing for this whole conversation is, is go read that transcript, even though it made me feel vulnerable to do it, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I think um, I think what uh, when I when I read your post uh, initially is. I, I immediately thought, well, how how could we apply this to to other forms of communication? And right. I kind of went to the idea of the AI personas, right? It's it's all about how to communicate however we communicate, right? Figuring out how we communicate best and AI enabling us to communicate deeper thoughts or work out much more complicated issues or, you know, concepts and things like that. And so after I read your article, I was like, okay, well, this connects to the, like, if you're going to apply it to business, right? This is the reason why you have your AI version of your C-suite, right? If you're the founder, founders do founder things, they're they're usually not good being CEO, CFO, you know, all that kind of thing, or maybe for a little bit. But uh, yeah, there, there reaches a point where founders want to just create new things or, you know, they're usually creating a company for a particular mission or goal or something like that. So having an AI C-suite, uh, they could have them give the uh you know give the answers have the the tough communication uh if you're going to prep for a board meeting um you know those kinds of things where you're just you're relying on that expertise right uh i think figuring out the best way and this was uh the uh, the takeaway i just got from what you're saying today was was the uh, chat gpt gets me right? That's, yeah. that's what I like. It's like, yes, okay. So if I can figure out the best way for me to communicate with ChatGPT, then I could have those 30 minute conversations. It's not just a fancy version of a Google search. It's not just a repository of, of knowledge. It's a help me figure out this thing here. My my true assistant. And so that's, that's immediately where I jump from there. It's like, yes, please. I just need my little fully interactive. Hey, so-and-so, can you help me? Da -da 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 -da, or I'm looking for this thing. Um, I, this is the project I want to work on. I'm thinking X, Y, and Z. Am I missing anything? Right? Yeah. I love that. And it allows you to work through your insecurities without bringing that to another human. Right. It's like, there's, there's so much that happens in a conversation with another human, whether that's business, whether that's personal, 
whether it's my daughter, right? You know, there's, there's so much that both sides are bringing to that conversation. And if you have an ability to educate yourself or work through some of those insecurities because you're feeling insecure that maybe you should like there's social societal pressures on you that you should know this perfect example of that is just being a general guy in the United States in his mid forties. There's a little bit of a, of a stereotype that I should be able to quote work on cars, right? Now, this is sort of going away over the years because cars are becoming giant computers and to work on a car means that you might brick it. <laughs> it may not move. I don't know that you want to open up a Tesla in your driveway and see what goes on. It's way too complex. But I will tell you, I was just working on my brakes. Uh, I was just I was checking my brakes, but I have a very knowledgeable neighbor. And even then, even though knowing that my neighbor, who is amazing and awesome and and does this stuff and works on cars and and understands the 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 width of a brake rotor and whether it's getting down to that wear down spot, so on and so forth. What I was doing was using AI and YouTube just to help me level set to feel better through my own security so that when I turned to my neighbor, I was perhaps using the right words and not going that thingy right there that spins. Because I'm thinking, Jesus, okay, I'm, I know, I know, I know, supposed, and I know I've worked on this before, but the last time I might have looked at my own rotors or brake pad thickness was probably over 20 years ago. So just like little things like that, I think are just so people should have that AI first mentality, not only with like prompting and stuff, but people should really have an AI first mentality about I'm going into this conversation, whatever the, 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 you know, the environment is, how can I be better prepared both for myself and how I'm going to conduct myself, but also maybe understanding better about the people I'm about to go into this conversation with. You know, perhaps I want to put in there myers Briggs type indicator. Maybe I want to know those four level, those four uh, indicators, if I know that, right? So that I go in there better prepared because I may be super excited to jump on a Zoom and they may be thinking to themselves, this is the worst part of my day is when somebody says, could you turn your camera on? How much better are we going to be at human communication if we have the ability to prepare a little bit better on our own before we get to that? I think that's the really exciting part for me. Andy, we haven't heard from you. Why don't you jump in? Sure. Um, I, I use uh, perplexity the same way you described using ChatGPT. In fact, you can select ChatGPT 4.0 as the underlying model within perplexity. Um, and it's a very nice, uh, easy way to share something. I, I tend... you. Uh, irrespective of what kind of decisions are being made, whether it's the product purchase decision or, you know, not exactly healthcare. I think I handle that, you know, for, for the family individually. So I don't have a, a tense conversation that's required there. Um, but um, I want to just comment on what it is that AIs do that makes decision support so, so much easier when using AI, and I, when I say decision support, I mean me providing decision support to my family members on issues that they're trying to address and or let's jump to the corporate strategy level here in, in corporate applications, you know, making decisions for strategic planning and resource allocation. You know, decision support for that is going to be advanced by AI. And here's why. First of all, AI collects relevant information and analyzes it, and it can rapidly process large data sets. It does real-time analysis and insight uh, generation from pattern recognition and correlations. It summarizes and presents, and it's now a conversational tool that's uh, digested all of those things, and it can be responsive to drill-down type inquiries, uh, where you can then use your own human judgment while evaluating the, the, the representations that have come back through that process. And you can prioritize certain facets, certain decision factors, and, and, and deliver re relevant lines of inquiry to the AI. And it's going to drill down on those and expand on those. Uh, so it, it's really the perfect tool for any kind of decision. Uh, and, and product purchase decisions, I, I tend now to go directly to perplexity. Why? Because perplexity uh, has, from its outset, always been able to do this massive data collection via its research and determination of what's relevant to what it is that your requested decision is. Like, I want to find and buy today the best thing that can be delivered tomorrow, and I give it those, those guidelines for a purchase decision. 
and it can go out and do that specific search for me, then put all that together and have a conversation about maybe the limitations or the benefits and cost analysis that I, that I want to have about that. We've thought a lot about uh, and, and talked on this show about a number of things that you can do with AI for decision support in marketing, like customer behavior analysis for campaign optimization, uh, deciding on product positioning, tar target uh, you know, personas and messaging. All of that is a native capability of these AIs. Uh, financial investment decisions. Like AI can analyze market trends and perform risk assessments and so on. So in your personal financial management, you'll get you know risk mitigation and, and portfolio balancing without having to consult with a a person who's going to you know work for one of the major financial institutions and so on. AI can supply you with that you know now and, and it's it's all to, to large extent free. Yeah. I love that you're using perplexity. I think you have a smart move. Like I think back to the break example, you're right that I probably should have just started with perplexity. And the reason for that is because I was looking for both probably video help as well as a search result. And I think you're right that that would have been a better use case because I would have probably gotten those like video clips on the right hand side that were more, because I was telling you, I was like a specific vehicle, right? I'm like, you know, the brakes on a 2019 Chevy Bolt, <laughs> you know, like really specific things. Now, God bless YouTube and all the people who have decided to make a video about the legit, you know, brakes of a 2019 Chevy Bolt. Like somebody turned on the camera and said, I don't know, I think somebody will find this relevant, you know, and thank God for that because it becomes like the encyclopedia of days only in video format. But now with perplexity, you're right. These, these language models are getting so good and not only pulling up the clip, we're starting to see this, but again, I think what we'll start to see even more, like Google does this already because they own YouTube, is highlighted parts of YouTube videos and different video clips that are all then strung together in a chain. But it might be the first 30 seconds of this one followed by the 20 seconds because perplexity or whatever the tool, the AI tool is, will be able to understand that I this is my overall overarching goal of whatever my search is and that it might want to link together five independent clips from five different videos that tells the whole overall story for me, the user. Uh, when, if we're not there, we're getting there very soon, which would be really cool. So it's going to be an even better experience, Andy, I think, in the, in the near future here. And then who knows with, you know, if there's like a Google Notebook LM application of a perplexity where not only are you getting that, but you just quickly hit the button and say, summarize this in an audio version for me. You know, right. it's immediately uh, I, there. What I'm thinking about, and I think, uh, Junmi, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, because uh, we're not quite there, but we're so close, I think, to you being able to open your hood. I'm assuming that the engine in the hood, maybe not, because uh, yeah, right. uh, EVs are in a different thing, but let's just go with hood because we're there. So you're going to open your hood. You're going to show it on your phone like, hey, this is what I'm looking at. It's going to go and find the Google video, the, the YouTube video, mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to make a 3D uh, inference about stuff. And so you're like, okay, so you're telling me it goes in here. Right. And what's that's going to look like? What am I going to feel with my hands? And it's going to infer that based on the information, like the yeah. the... So this is the worldview that we keep talking about. Does it have a view? Can it infer based on a 2D um, visual representation, the 3D experience? And what we're seeing over and over again is yes, but it's not quite prime time. Jimmy, are you thinking that too? Yeah. So there's a couple of, a couple of technologies. Um, we've seen some uh, generative AI models. Uh, that have been recently released where they're talking about just taking 2D images and converting them into a 3D model, right? So we, we know that already. There's the company Wondershare that is taking live action video or film and uh, imposing your 3D models, you know, mapping it. So we've got we've got action, movement, depth, uh, lighting, all of those kinds of things. Then when you mix in technologies like VR, AR, or, you know, the, the umbrella XR, 
right? The experience, uh, it allows you to then use the hardware technology. So like glasses or goggles or anything like that. And that's when you get your HUD, right? Your heads up, your display, your overview, your overlay. And so not only will you look at the engine of the car, it will create a 3D model. That'll bring that up. It'll bring all of the references that are needed. Also, uh, it will break down whatever information sources and then show you step by step how to replace that spark plug or how to replace this thing, right? Um, ever have to ch change a belt, you know, it'll run you through what that, what that whole process is and then show you what that process is, you know, uh, whether that on a certain level, that'll be a video that you can learn. And that'll also be a overview. Think, think, uh, I know it's so funny, but think of it as like video games, right? It's like, you're going to see an arrow that says, grab this thing, you grab it. Okay. Next, put it over here. You know, those kinds of things. And all of that that all of that is is just more information to help you guide through a complex process that you didn't have any experience with right it it lowers the bar or you know uh lowers the barriers into uh, personal empowerment i think right with knowledge comes power so if everyone can work on their own car, if everyone can repair their own their own devices, uh, everyone can design or redesign the layout of their room. You know, it's like, oh, instead of like, I, I can't tell you how many times as a kid I was asked, like, move that heavy, huge TV from left to right, change the couch over here, move this picture over there. It's like, OK, well, why don't we just take a look, rearrange all the elements? Does that look good? Okay, cool. Send send me those instructions. All right, I'll take care of it for you. You know, yeah. those kinds of things. And, and, you know, look, I think you're right, Jimmy. Like, this is all very near state, um, or we've seen demos or variations of this and meta glasses, right? Like, the idea of, you know, AR, I think AR just even in 2025 is going to really have a, a good year. And I think every year after that, it's going to be pretty amazing because we're really finally seeing the culmination of technology get small enough and mobile enough and batteries that are long enough to really bring things out into the real world versus maybe before we were having to rely a little bit more on clunky architecture or computing or whatever, or VR, which is not the same thing as the overlays. But I do want to make sure for today, getting back to what is currently available today. Look, right now, I mean, J Andy's already talked about it, Beth and Jumia as well. Um, you guys have all mentioned this, but like right now, you can give an, a picture of what it is you're looking at in Claude. You can do that in, um, Can you, I guess you can do that as part of perplexity. You can definitely do it in ChatGPT and ask questions against it. Now, you're not going to get an overlay AR video right now, but there's a good chance it's going to say, it looks like what you're looking at is, a, is an engine, or it looks like what you're looking at is X, Y, Z. Or it doesn't have to be an image like that. It could be, it could be a, a proposal. It could be an SOW. It could be a white paper. It could be a lot of things that you might copy and paste that. But there might also be like uh, a visuals in there that you want. Claude just got really good with 3.5 Sonnet. I'm not only looking at PDFs. It's one of their new feature functions uh, that you can turn on as a preview. I'm sorry, one of their new preview functions that you could turn on where it's not only looking at PDFs. Now it's actually able to look at those images and make sense of those images and say, well, the, the overall context of this PDF is X, Y, Z, but it's taking in both the copy, the text of it, as well as whatever the, the point was of a graph, a chart, or simply an image that was put into the PDF to supplement the story. Now Claude can take that and right now, just you can turn that on as one of the preview functions and it will help you better understand that. And to me, this just goes back to the overall conversation about we talk a lot about you know AI as a tutor AI as an educator is AI good is it going to perhaps make human communication worse because we'll all have this tool that can kind of do it for us and is it cheating and I go back into it and say no actually what it can do is make AI communication I'm sorry human communication that much more efficient powerful meaningful by allowing people to do, and this is important, quick research 
almost near instant research prior to having those inner connections. There's a good, I think it's Google right now that has that commercial out where the girl, somebody says, hey, across the room. It's a, it's an actress. I just don't know who she is. And she showed a ducks behind the wall and she's like, it might be Siri. She's like, hey, who's, who's the person I met three weeks ago at the such and such? And they're like, oh, that's Tom. And she comes back around the wall and she's like, hey, Tom. He's like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe you remember me. You could see that as cheating or you can see that as making the human interactions and connections that much better. I tend to be in the latter camp of that, that I like what this is able to do for me. I'm not trying to use my daughter's, you know, vernacular and, and buzzwords that are going around her school. I'm not trying to work Riz or Skibbity into a conversation with my daughter, right? And be that parent that's, that's trying to be like, hey, I get you. No, I don't care about that. I don't think I, that's not what my daughter's expecting of me, but I do care that I can use AI to get informed about things that she's uniquely dealing with in her school and maybe different subjects and things like that and have a conversation with AI first to say, hey, help me look around the corners here. Help me see it from her perspective. I understand it from my perspective as a 46-year-old male and as a dad, you know, who has a blinders on about loving her, but help me understand this now that you've helped me understand it from my side. Now I want you to put the hat on of the 14-year-old. And what is she seeing in this conversation? That's magic. Because maybe it uncovers for me something that I absolutely would have missed. And I would have come at it from this angle or that angle or a little bit harder or whatever. And I would have missed what was most important to my daughter in that conversation. What she needed to hear from me. Dude, if AI can help me be a better parent and raise a better child and help her get out in the world to be more prepared to have better conversations and do critical thinking skills, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So one of the things, one of the things that I think um, uh, we have not touched on yet is, um, is I think like a really important point and something that is missing in most of setting this kind of stuff up. And I will preface this by saying that I used to do tech support and I know Doomy did too. So uh, the, the ability to clarify your goal for the research, the ability to get super clear on what you want to know and why you want to know it is so golden because it makes the rest of the process easier. Right. And the relationship to tech support is that if you actually really sit down and do and like go through everything the tech support person need, needs, this is the program that I was in. This is what happened. This is what I wanted to have happen. This is what I observed. You just about answered your own question. Right. And so being able to get super clear on what you want then makes that conversation go really well. And AI can turn on a dime and do that, right? So let's, so I'm going to set up this thing. I've given it all the data. It's done some research for me. I have all of this. I'm going to sit down and say, hey, so uh, this is the out, this is the outcome of the decision that I need to make. I need to have chosen one of five, right? These are my goals. These, these are my parameters. Like I can't choose, uh, I can only spend $750 a month or like whatever it is. Um, that sounds horrifying. It's just a number that came up. But uh, so that um, being able to set that and now go ahead and talk to me about what's important to me. Let's get super clear on what I need from this content and then let's make a decision. And AI can like interview you. AI can be your best buddy and it, like interview me like a pirate if this is a stressful conversation, right? Like, I mean, there's so many ways you can ask AI to support you in what you are uh, needing to move forward on. And that's one of the reasons that I thought this was such a great show because it's such a good use case. Yeah. I love the idea of inflecting a little bit of comedy to um, bring down maybe the tension or the tone of it. Like, I mean, you could still get great information. Uh, maybe I should have tried that with the healthcare stuff. Like towards the end, I should have said, all right, all right. You know, um, we, we've gotten this far, you know, explain this to me like a pirate, you know, just to, because it, it breaks the tension, right? Beth, it's just like, it's just a little snap back in and go, hey, look, this is serious stuff. But at the same time, like, you know, if it's right, obviously, we're not talking about act like a pirate for mental health. Uh, but if it's if it fits the situation, and Jimmy's like, I don't know, maybe I do. 
she read your face. She was like, I don't know, maybe I do want to buy it as a mental health consultant. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I think, it, you know, depending on the situation, you know, being able to do that, Beth, and have, you said it, like, have AI turn on a dime. Like, it's willing to adjust to you. And I think this all, you know, the theme here, it's like, it's like how to be a better human, you know, how to have better conversations, difficult conversations, how to be able to be vulnerable without exposing yourself, you know, in a public way, because you've forgotten how thing, you know, whatever, like I said, you're supposed to know something as an adult or whatever age or whatever the stereotype is that says you're supposed to know this, you're that age, you know, like everybody's expecting this of you and you're able to do the research and kind of get caught back up again that there's a there's a um, angle on that as well that i think goes beyond just uh, making it easier to have difficult conversations and it is the elimination of bias from shared facts from solid research that's been delivered by ai in real time so in, in a lot of cases you know decisions can be made in, in companies just based on political or interpersonal you know uh, hierarchical issues uh, and not necessarily with all the common information that you know ought to be shared in the group that could be working collaboratively to a decision so you know I, sort of ironically bias is one of the things we worry about in AI but I think it in this context, bringing information that's going to be shared before the conversation, it eliminates bias and eliminates this sort of political pressure to, to follow one person of the loudest voice in the room. Instead, you've got a real foundation and, and, and in effect, a, an, a, an unbiased and authoritative source at the table. Yeah, I mean, what if I, we, we've we heard this scenario with Jeff Bezos where he, I don't, anyway, this is a story from Jeff Bezos that I heard from Amazon. And the whole point was that they were having trouble getting the executives to get in a room and having had read the brief or the 10 page PDF that they were going to be talking about. And uh, also people being distracted in the meeting. And so he made this comment one time that I thought was sort of brilliant. He's like, no, 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 what we do now is you have to like drop your phones off at the door. You have to come in, you're handed the brief, then everybody sits at the table silently for 15 minutes till you've read the brief there at the table, then we have a discussion about it. And like, it's almost like this funny part about this guy's running Amazon and basically what he's saying is like, we have to treat adults like kids because we can't get them to focus at the table. So everybody has to put their toys away. There could be zero distractions in the room. Nobody says anything. All you have to literally do for the next 10 minutes is read and comprehend this brief so we can have a conversation about it. But you could also introduce this Andy and say like, hey, everybody come into the room using your tool of choice, perplexity, whatever. This is the topic that we're about to discuss. You've come in the room with your own understandings of it. Here's maybe, um, we've already pre-fed into this, you know, some knowledge documents that are, that are important for our company and stuff. That's already in there. Take the next 10 minutes and just do your own AI research on this topic. Here's what you think. This is what you want to talk about. This is what's important to you. You're concerned about this. You think this is becoming groupthink. You want to fight bias, whatever, whatever that is. Do that research. Now let's all have a conversation about it. I, you know, not everybody's going to research and get the, own the same answer with AI. It's going to adjust to how that particular human used it, right? So then you're not going to get the same answer. You're not going to worry about AI giving everybody the wrong answer or or hallucinating because you have a collective group of humans who are now using that as part of their process of having a better conversation. I think with the right structure, this could be a really great solution in a lot of companies. So I want to I want to jump in here and uh, and also give like some parameters about uh, using it well. Right. So one of the one of the truths that has come out in uh, many pieces of the research um, is that AI can be incredibly helpful when the person using AI understands what AI is doing and the limitations within. So what you are doing in this is uh, is creating like a super helpful, um, let's say a super helpful golden retriever. 
right? Or a golden lab, super helpful uh, golden lab. So there are times where you're going to want to say, hey, I get that you retrieved that. We're having a lot of fun. Go ahead and tell me where that's from, hmm. right? Because you want to make sure that you are sussing for hallucinations. So that was one of the things that happened in the chat is like, this is great until it starts to hallucinate, right? And that is true. And you just know, I mean, like everybody loves uh, the, the golden lab, golden retriever thing. That just is like, there are squirrels around and that's going to happen. So you, so you, as the person engaging in this conversation, um, are, it's your responsibility to make sure that it tracks back to the actual content that you are having a discussion about, right? Um, because again, for AI LLMs chatbots, um, they are not generally distinguishing between right answers and wrong answers. They're distinguishing between probable answers and less probable answers. Right. So it's that I just think it's important as we're talking about making really important decisions. So uh, so the efficacy and truthfulness of what you come up with um, is your responsibility also. So just make sure that you're going back in and checking that. And I think you're really talking about AI literacy, right? You know, if we take that same example of the boardroom and say that they're going to implement that policy, a couple things, right, Beth? Number one, uh, I all think uh, maybe Andy, you'd be you'd be great to talk about this since I'm sure you spend time in boardrooms with what you're doing at Life Aid and 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 roles before that. Um, but a couple things. Number one, there has to be top down support. Number two, the AI um, research cannot be coming top down and, and spread out and being like one person saying, this is what I did the research on and this is what we found. That's a great way to get one hallucination to, do, to disseminate very quickly through 10 people in a room who now say like, that sounds right. That's different than having a decoupled or decentralized approach where you're, you're saying, hey, we will train you to better understand and expect what AI can and cannot do. These are the reasonable expectations and guardrails about the types of information you can get back. That's the AI training and literacy part of it, right, Beth? And you say, this is what it can do. Now understanding that and what you could hope to get as the end of it, use this tool, whatever, and then we will collectively have a discussion about it. In my mind, Andy, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this, but in my mind, that definitely protects somewhat against one maybe error or hallucination quickly making its way through the ranks because there's a less of a chance of that happening if everybody is independently with good knowledge using AI. Well, I, I think this is more applicable to the uh, work groups within the company before the board meeting. Okay. Uh, at the board level, there's an expectation that the board presentation is going to be fully researched, very accurate, no mistakes and and no discussion really are outside of that. Although board members can challenge some of the assumptions and or premises that you know the board presentation presents. But before that, and and in in different departments and functions, you know, trying to arrive at decisions that are important for strategy and resource allocation, then that's a great application. And I would expect, at least in a company that I would run in this day and age. I would expect that every one of the senior executives would be very proficient using AI research tools in support of their own decisions and their own department's actions. And when we get to a collective where we're making decisions that are cross-departmental, I want to make sure that those people are bringing every tool at at their uh, you know disposal at hand into that, and, and AI is going to be prominent there. Yeah, I love that. And you're right, by the way, I misspoke. I shouldn't have said, because you, you called it out. I shouldn't have said boardroom. I should have just said conference room because that's what I was thinking in my head. I wasn't really thinking a boardroom, but you're right to call that out. Like, yeah, no, that's not accurate at the boardroom level that I just meant a group of people coming into a conference of these. It's your Wednesday meeting. I have memories of my dad talking about Wednesdays when he worked at um, uh, Delta Airlines because Wednesdays, for whatever reason, in what he was doing in maintenance and stuff like that were meeting day. They just put them all on Wednesday. So my dad would say, like, ah, oh, it's Wednesday. And what he meant was like, I'm going to be sitting in a different room <laughs> every 45 minutes to two hours for my entire day. I won't go to my desk. I will I barely have lunch. It'll be, it'll be boardrooms all day long. And, or, and I'm sorry, again, I said it wrong. Conference rooms all day long. And he his big thing was like, he knew the meetings were the one person was going to stand up and they really liked to listen to themselves speak and they were going to pontificate on everything. 
and everybody was just going to have to, you know, take it. <laughs> they were the executive or whatever, you know. I look forward to the day when there's an AI assistant in those meetings. Yeah. It's fully informed and you can just ask it questions. And that's, a, that's an authoritative source because it has access to all the information from every department and can bring the, the facts. You know, just even presenting a situation report for distribution and logistics right now. Hey, Mike's busy. He, you know, he's, he's chasing down a real problem. You know, the things are freezing on the trucks or whatever, but okay. What is the situation with distribution now for these other products? And the AI assistant can give you a full report on that. Yeah. And, and a condensed one too. Like it's not going to, it's not going to, you know, ramble on for 30 minutes. It's going to give it to you in 30 seconds. Yeah. Best, do you remember, this is the last thing I'll say, but I, cause I can't bring a whole lot of context to this, but did what Andy just talked about, do you remember you and I were leading a room with the AI exchange and there was a gentleman in there and he was building what Andy was just saying. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, what we do is we create the virtual AI assistant that sits in the, in the conference rooms and becomes like the extra employee. This was well over a year ago. And I remember you and I and whoever else, I don't know, Jimmy or, or Andy, if you were in that room, I remember being blown away by what that guy was saying. I was like, wait, hold on, we can do this. So this, you know, he was just ahead of the game as far as what he was talking about. But he's like, this is what we try to do for companies. Right. Because and and just to give like some context for that. Yes, it was possible a year ago, but it's so much easier now. Yeah. Right. Like you're not uh, well, like the difference is now you're just uploading a file. And it's making all the links and inference based on like it's making all the connections that it needs to make because that is now understood, right? In the same way that when you up upload a file into Google Drive, I believe all of us remember when you actually needed to know where you put it in your Google Drive in order to ever find it again. That is not happening anymore. You upload it, and as long as it's in the whole Google Drive, uh, it it can pretty much bring that back. Um, so, like that kind of stuff. That's how, like, the capability was there. It's now gotten a ton easier. And Andy, I love that idea. I mean, how many meetings would we be? Uh, how many meetings would be better served if we could say? Oh, damn. Didn't we have a conversation last week? Uh, wait, somebody said those numbers. Now we're going to, in a human conversation, we're going to be like, oh, I remember that too. Uh, like, okay, now we're going to have a whole conversation about our memory about what was happening. Yeah. In the AI future that is now? Uh, yes. In fact, somebody did say those numbers last week, and those are blah, 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 blah. And, and, and think about just how much more real time the data analysis can be. Yeah. Somebody might've mentioned in a meeting last week and we're trying to remember what that was, but we don't care because now we're going to do the analysis right now. AI assistant, what's the current yes. financial position uh, uh, that, that was re referenced back there? Like bring it up to date and now tell us what the solution is. And give me, and give me the the difference uh, between that in uh, in whole, right? Like I want it in uh, absolute dollars, and I want it in percentage, and I want the percentage compared to what it was like last year at this time, right? Like just like imagine, week. like last week. What's the delta? Right? Is this accelerating or is this is this improving? Right. That kind of question is hard to answer when you're using human financial an analysts and trying to collect that information and bring it up the chain. Uh, AI is going to collapse all of that and make that really easy. And I mentioned this quote before. People have heard this. It's famous, but torture the data enough and it'll confess to anything. This will actually help with some of that. Because there's, there's every single day, there's stories where people, because of pressures of their company or whatever, are trying to manipulate data to show a certain story because it's their job or whatever, AI is going to sort of combat some of that and ensure that the people who are making the big decisions are actually seeing not tortured data from several different angles. Because right now, a lot of it is like, well, how was the, how, the data that we're looking at is how did the last human interpret and, and put that chart together? And we all know that you can extrapolate and make a, a, a Y or an X axis different and it will drastically make the data look different. We've all seen that with a with a you know like oh you could look at a bar chart this way, but if I but I make the y axis a one to one, 
it looks completely different, right? So there's a lot there I think that's really important. I think for today's conversation, we'll put a pin in this one, but this is a really good jumping off point till tomorrow's conversation, which is really just to do a, a bit of a deep dive, a bit of a look deeper into uh, ChatGPT's, OpenAI's new search GPT. But to be honest with you, that's what they called it before. Now it's just search in ChatGPT or something like that. They sort of swap the words around. Anyway, what we really want to do is talk about where it has some real big strengths. The big question a lot of people ask is how does it now compare to per perplexity? Is it a perplexity killer? Uh, I don't think so. That's a little forethought on that. I don't think Andy would probably say no to that as well. But let's talk about that. Like if it's built into ChatGPT, is there a reason now to go outside of it for that type of information? So that's what we'll be doing on tomorrow's show. And it is a really good kind of jump off from today's conversation. So make sure you guys come back and then uh, also make sure, you know, if you want to get the latest newsletter before this weekend, it'll go out on Sunday morning. Maybe you've been um, thinking about, you know, subscribing, but you haven't done it. You can go to dailyishow.com and you can sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, the next uh, edition, I think number 23 or something like that will go out on Sunday morning. So that's it for today. Make sure you guys come back tomorrow for all the goodness that's around search GPT. And uh, thanks for all the conversation in the, in the comments as well. You guys are the best. All right, until tomorrow.